Welcome to part two, chapter six. The emphasis for this chapter is about the value offer. And what we're looking at now is how distribution creates value and how you can use distribution as part of a very specific element in your value offering. Now, if you're on a social media platform, your primary distribution platform or your primary distribution channel is that platform. So Instagram is the platform, but that isn't the only distribution for that content. If you note when you're using something like Instagram, there are share buttons and there's the ability to set up a distribution through Instagram itself and also through services, brokerage services like If This Then That to move content and links to content into other platforms. So distribution also is a facet that you want to be thinking about when you're looking at curation. As a curator of content, you are also a distributor of other people's work. So what you can then do is start thinking like a retailer, start thinking like a wholesaler. You want working relationships with content providers you want to enable people to access your audience and you want to do this in a way that the content that you're providing to your audience is valuable both to that audience so they will stay around and to the person who you're distributing so this way the mutual beneficial relationship provides content that your audience wants so you keep you get the likes you retain the audience you grow the audience and you also maintain a healthy working relationship with the content provider whose work you're reproducing this is the whole interesting aspect of what takes place with distribution on the internet is that distribution is a very old theory in fact the first definition of marketing back in 1935 talked about marketing as a distribution platform. Marketing was the purpose of getting surplus goods and services to market. And basically, that was it. It was distribution channel. So what we've got here, we've got a lot of other theories from other areas that are very important to us. We've got the logistics, we've got retailing, we've got business to business. We've also got things like the Porter's value chain, in the AMA definition, we talk about partners. So these are this is an encouragement to think, as well as what do we know about e-marketing, what do we know about distribution in the broader sense? Now, a couple of the aspects that I do want to draw your attention to, co-location, idea distribution, and market space. Co-location is really important. This is where you borrow from services theory and you need to be thinking in order for value consumption in order for value to take place the product and the consumer have to be at the same point now what this means for e-marketing your audience needs to be on the platform that you're using your audience needs to be able to access your content for example, whenever I tweet a link to a journal article, whenever I recommend a journal article in the link section on Wattle, if it's a subscription only journal, there's no code location. Unless you're on the university's IP range, if you go there and you get met with the firewall and the $35 US or 35 euro purchase price, there's no value. In fact, there's only frustration created. So the co-location didn't occur. You went to the point where the product should be and you were denied. So you want to be thinking about this in terms also for things like uh, where you're reblogging or where you're uh, reblogging, regramming and retweeting. The system is calibrated to facilitate access. But where you're providing links to third party sources, you want to be mindful of things like paywalls. You want to be mindful of 
do I need a subscription or a login or, or am I logged into this service and therefore I can see this piece of information or this piece of content I want to share? Would someone else need to be logged in? So co-location does have its, as well as its, you know, the patently obvious. If you know on Instagram, you can't readily, easily view Instagram. But Instagram still has a public face. You can still see an Instagram page by going to it uh, on the internet. Instagram images can be shared to other sites. So the co-location becomes, will the customer, will your audience be at the point where your product is? Or are there barriers that are in place? What are the co-location points that need to be there? Because this also comes back to the product and the idea of the behavior. Where does the customer need to go? What does the customer need to do to access the value of that product? So think distribution when you're also analyzing uh, the behavior component. Idea distribution. This is where we borrow a major amount of theory from social marketing. In social marketing, we teach people ideas as a foundation for behavioral change. We have this lovely little model, which is learn, feel, do, and the different ordering of that. But basically, the learn, feel, do, or the learn, do, feel, says the first thing we need to do is get the idea to the end user. Then either they're going to have an emotive response or a behavioral response, and we get an outcome. But the ideas need to be moved from point to point. The challenge is drawing the line between the promotion of an idea and the distribution of the idea. So you know which of the packets you're going to be applying. If you are moving an image from point A to point B, so you're using Instagram, but you're using Instagram to promote a brand, and that can be brand you, or it can be uh, a commercial brand, non-profit brand. Are you moving an idea? Are you distributing an idea, or are you promoting an idea? So you want to actually, again, it's one of those um, slightly more meta moments that as a student, unpacking and dissecting what it is we do, you want to look into this concept of, am I moving the idea as a distribution, or am I promoting the idea? Is the end game about awareness or persuasion, or is the end game about access? So this is what you want to be thinking about because this will help you calibrate the content, the framing. If you're trying to just simply put a block of ideas in someone's possession, then really it's a PDF file and a download link versus you're trying to simultaneously produce and consume an idea, you want that experience to be able to be done immediately. So it's a message in an image that leads to thought, feelings, or behavior versus an instruction to go somewhere else and download something to read later. Market space. This is a, one of those things that when the matrix came out, uh, there was a whole lot of us in academia who went and looked at that and said, yeah, we can, we can borrow a whole chunk of this. The whole concept of cyberspace and market space is that you have a world of data that overlays onto the physical world. It's much stronger now. And when we're looking at the, the citations here are 94, 96, and 98, because we're now looking at a 20-year-old concept we take for granted. Mobile phones have geotagging. Geotagging allows you to put a location on a tweet, a Facebook post, or an Instagram photo, or a YouTube upload. It allows you to create geographic events. The Windows 10 has a geofence. It lets you enable your computer to work out where your computer is so you can, the laptop can do things like change time zones or necessarily change logins. It's like, oh, I'm located at home, says the laptop. I should be acting differently 
to I'm located at the office. So we've got this market space, we've got this layer of data over the world. For a lot of people, it's going to be completely invisible. As a marketer, you want to be thinking about what value market space can provide you in terms of audience access, in terms of audience engagement. Can you, if you are using your social media presence to facilitate a physical world, so you know, a cafe, a live music venue, a club on campus, is the market space, is the geophysical element of tagging locations, tagging, checking into places, is this useful to the message, the brand, and the product you're trying to offer with these very physically located things? The flip side to this as well is if you're selling yourself as a brand, do you want to not give away where you are physically on a regular basis? Uh, just to have a little exclusivity, a little magic to the old mystery here? Or is a physicality, a va is physicality through market space, locating yourself, is it valuable, is it useful? Think about it as a way to enhance a product, particularly if you're doing anything that's really geophysical in nature. So you've got targeted geographic based audiences. You're really keen to pick up an audience who's located somewhere, you might want to really look into what you can do with market space and market space data. The last thing is that we want to get you a, get you thinking about a question. And this is the idea of, if we're distributing ideas through promotion, where's the point of consumption? If you Google if you hit a question into Google and the branded message or the answer comes up and you haven't left the Google search page, was that a successful distribution channel? Was that successful distribution or was that a failure in distribution? If I can get the answer to a question without going from the website, without going to that website, was it a failure or a success of distribution? Hypothetical, theoretical, but also if your metric is clicks, hits, and page loads versus problem solved, it becomes a very serious question. So for distribution, as always, I've got a physical location, I've got a virtual location, and I've got the email address as well. So if you need me for any of the aspects here, particularly going to emphasize in distribution, there's a lot of work outside of e-marketing for you to draw on, particularly if you are really keen on doing curation-led social media accounts, get into reading up on the business-to-business -business literature, and particularly look at retailing models, look at wholesaling models, and look at brokerage models. Those are your big external sources that can really help drive a curation-led account.